come now to the reading and preaching of God's Word, and we return this morning back to the book of Acts. So I invite you to turn there to Acts chapter 22. We take a look at verses 22 to 29. Using your pew Bible, you can find this on page 932. So again, I invite you to take out your scripture and turn to Acts 22 as we look at verses 22 through 29 this morning. And before we read God's word and hear God speak to us through the preached word, I invite you to join me in prayer, asking God to illumine our hearts and minds. Please join me. Lord God, we do come before this morning thanking you and praising you that you don't just reveal yourself through creation, but in a special and mighty way through your word, or particularly your preached word. So do that this morning, Lord. Help us to see the need to share our citizenship, Lord, to tell the whole story about how we belong to Jesus Christ and are part of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, I ask you to be with me, your servant. Let the words I speak be not my own, Lord, but let them be your words placed in my mouth for the edifying of your people and turning hearts to yourself. Use this preached word in a mighty way, Lord, to accomplish your purposes. We ask this in Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen. So Acts chapter 22, verses 22 to 29. Hear now God's holy, inerrant, and infallible word. Up to this word, they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered them to be brought into the barracks, saying he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, what are you about to do? For this man's a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I bought this citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, But I'm a citizen by birth. So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately. And the tribune also was afraid. For he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. I want you to think about me asking you to come up front here and introduce yourself. What would you say? What words would leave your mouth? Would you talk about your relationship, your kids, your job, your hobbies, maybe how your relatives hail from Italy or Spain? See, this is what we often do. We talk about everything but the truth of our true citizenship. Because as Christians in the church, when people say, who are you? We talk about everything other than the Son, other than how we belong to Jesus Christ and how we're citizens of his kingdom. But you shouldn't do this and you wouldn't do this if you realize the power of sharing your citizenship. Because when you share your citizenship, talk about the truth of what Christ has done in your life, you know what that does? That shows people where they find their healing, their help, and their hope. And it's not in their relationships, it's not in their jobs, it's not in their ability to speak three or four languages. But it's in Jesus Christ and Him alone who sets you free. And that's why what you want to do is just like this text this morning is showing you. You want to share your citizenship. Do this and show people how they can be set free. So I want to invite you to take a walk with me. Let's go back into ancient Rome. And here's what I want you to hear Paul say this morning. First... You need to speak. Second, speak about your citizenship. Third, your citizenship impacts people. And fourth, impacted people are set free. And this brings us to our big idea. Get this down and seek to put this into practice and live this out. Here's your big idea. Share your citizenship and set people free. So first, you need to speak. You ever find yourself in a situation where you know you need to speak, but you don't? You stay silent, you stay quiet, because you don't want to offend anybody, upset them, make them mad. Can you relate to that? You ever been in a situation where you see, you got somebody, you know they're wrong, what they're saying just doesn't make any sense, what they're doing is contrary to God's word, and you know what's wrong, but you say, you know what? I'm going to just stay silent, stay quiet, because I don't want to make them mad. And we justify this by saying it's the proper and polite thing to do. 
After all, why should it make somebody mad? Get them upset. But ask yourself this question. Is it really polite and proper? If you know somebody who's sick and dying, and you have the cure, and you refuse to share it with them, how does that help? See, that's why you need to speak. Because when you speak the truth of God's word, you give people healing, help, and hope. And that's why Paul's starting out by saying just that. You need to speak, just as you see in our text. Look at verse 22, how it begins. Up to this word, they listen to him. This shows how Paul's speaking about his faith. He's been doing this ever since chapter 21, verse 37. Remember what's taking place. Got to think back several weeks ago. Paul's been arrested. And he asked the tribune, can I speak to the people? And he says, yes, speak. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it'll calm them down. So Paul starts speaking about his faith. Starts talking not just how he's a citizen of Tarsus, but how he's a citizen of God's kingdom. He shares how he's walking along the Damascus Road, minding his own business, when the risen Lord appeared to him and changed his heart and made him new. And they're hanging on every word as Paul speaks about this. They can't get enough of it until he speaks this word. Look at your text. See what it says until he speaks this word? Well, what is this word that he speaks that gets him so riled up, gets him so mad? Well, if you look back, you'll see in verse 21 what that word is. He says that God called him, ready for this? To go to the Gentiles to set them free. This sets these Jews off. They're outraged. They're like, no way, this can't be the case. And it shows you why you need to speak, even if it makes people mad. Just like you see in our text. Look at verse 22, how it continues. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he shouldn't be allowed to live. They're saying Paul deserves to die for suggesting that God sent him to the Gentiles. And this shows the importance of speaking. It shows why you need to speak, even though it might make people mad, might get them upset. Because you know why? Because God's word is what pierces people's hearts and turns them. Turns them to their need for Jesus Christ. If you never share that, then they never see their need. These people are so mad, they're willing to kill Paul for what he said. And you see right here what Paul's doing. You see through this why you need to share your citizenship. Because it impacts people and makes a difference. When people hear how you belong to Jesus Christ, how you're part of God's heavenly kingdom, it makes a difference for them. Because you get to show them how your identity has been changed and you have a new home. Understand, you got people all around you wandering through life, dissatisfied, unhappy, worried and concerned. What's my future going to look like? They're sick and they're dying. And you know what? You've got the cure. It's the gospel. It's Jesus Christ. So share it. Share your citizenship and show them how they can be set free. And let them know that you too were once just like them, resisting and rejecting God. You were just like Paul, just walking through life, minding your own business, when all of a sudden, God grabbed you and it made a difference. Then it changed your life. Then it started to make you think differently, get a new perspective. Let them put a smile on your face and think that God did that for you. Let them know if you can be saved, then they can be saved. Because there's nobody worse than you, right? You know what you think. You know what's in your heart. We're good at hiding it, but we know it's there. But God calls us to himself and changes that. Because you came to see how Jesus Christ went to the cross to shed his blood and purchase your part. He cleanses and purifies you. But that's not all. Because he ascends on high and sends his spirit to give you a new heart and a new identity and make you new. And that means, guess what? You get a new dad. Because God becomes your heavenly father. He adopts you as your sons and daughters. That's what he does. Calls you into his family. And that sets you free. No longer chained to your sin and your shame. Because you know Christ has covered it for you. And that makes all the difference. That's your true identity. And that's what people need to hear. Because what this says is you are safe and secure no matter what comes your way. Even when people are freaking out at you, just like you see in our text. Look at verse 23. <clears throat> and as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air. This shows a pretty hostile crowd being depicted. They want Paul dead because they think he's just blaspheming. This is why they're so angry. 
Because think about what Paul just said. He said that God is sending me to the Gentiles. And he's doing that to set them free. To include them as part of his kingly heaven. His heavenly kingdom. And this sets them off. They think that he's blaspheming. And how do you see that? Because look what they're doing. They're throwing off their cloaks. That means tearing their cloaks off. Throwing dust in the air. It's like putting ashes on their head. They are so upset because when Paul mentions the Gentiles, it reminds them of why they're so upset in the first place. Because they heard that Paul broke Trophimus the Ephesian into the temple. And that's bad enough. But now, to make it even worse, Paul's suggesting that God is sending him to the Gentiles like somehow these filthy animals could be included in God's kingdom. That sets them off. That means Paul needs to die for this. And that's why you need to speak. You know why? Because there's so many people all around you who think that very thing about themselves. They think they're too far gone, too bad, too guilty, too defiled, too unlovable for God or anyone else to care about. You know what they need? They need healing, help, and hope. And you provide that as long as you're willing to speak. Because you're able to tell them who Jesus Christ is and what he does. You can let them know that Jesus Christ didn't come for the healthy, but he came for the sick. You can let them know how bad you were and how bad you still are, but what does Christ promise? To hold you in his hands and never let you go. And that's a promise you can guarantee because God fulfills his promises. Help them to understand that they don't need to make themselves right. They don't need to clean themselves up because Jesus Christ does that on the cross. That's what he accomplishes for them. Because God takes your sin and your shame and Jesus takes it to himself and takes it to the cross. And you know what you get in exchange? His perfect righteousness imputed to you. Talk about a deal. Talk about a bargain. That's something worth getting. That's something worth sharing. That's what people need to hear. So share your citizenship and let them know who you truly are, to whom you truly belong. Understand, speaking the truth might make people mad, might get them upset and get them angry. But they need to hear it, because that's the only way that people get saved. Realize you can be nice to people, kind to people, stay silent and polite, but they won't get saved. They only get saved through the hearing of God's word. And that tells you what this text is driving at, why you need to speak. And when you speak, make sure you give the whole story, not just part of it, but the whole story, which brings us to our second point. Speak about your citizenship. When you think about your identity, your heritage, your ancestry, what comes to your mind? Do you right away turn to the old country, your ancestor, your heritage, your relatives? See, this is where most of us go when we talk about who we are. We talk about our identity and our, and our ethnicity. I'm Italian, I'm Spanish, I'm Portuguese. But that misses the whole truth. See, when you share your citizenship, you're doing like you do in court. You're speaking the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because you're not leaving anything out, but you're telling people how you belong to Jesus Christ, how you're a citizen of God's kingdom. And that's why you need to speak about your citizenship just like Paul does. Look at verse 24. Look what it says here. The tribe you ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. Paul's being honest about who he is, what God has called him to do, and he's sharing God's word, speaking about his citizenship. And what does this do? This sets people off, gets them outraged. They want Paul dead. So the tribune, he's got to step in and save him. He brings him into the barracks to get him away from the people so they won't tear him to shreds, won't tear him apart. But understand something. Helping Paul, saving Paul, is not really what's on this tribune's mind. See, he wants to figure out exactly what's going on. Remember again our context. Paul is being arrested. The people are outraged. And he says, let me talk to the crowd. And the tribune says, yes, you can speak to him. And how does Paul speak to him? In the Jewish dialect of the day, which was Aramaic. And guess what? This Roman tribune, he doesn't speak Aramaic. So all he can do is see what's going on. He recognizes. He doesn't know what Paul said, but whatever it was, it wasn't good. Kind of set these people off, made them mad. You ever experience this? You ever see people speaking a foreign language you don't speak and you don't understand? But you know when somebody sets someone else off, right, makes them mad? You can tell by the tone in their voice, the facial expression, the slap to the face. And if that doesn't clue you off, when they take out their focus and start throwing rocks at them, you say something's not right. 
Well, that's what the tribune here is seeing. He's seeing that these people are outraged, and he wants to know why. What did Paul just say that has them so mad? He's supposed to be calming the situation down. So what does he do? He's going to use this interrogate, interrogation technique. He's going to basically torture Paul. He's going to beat it out of him. He's going to have Paul fly. And it's in this context that you see why you need to share your citizenship, just like Paul does. Look at verse 25. Look what happens here. But when they stretched him out for whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, is it lawful for you to flog a man who's a Roman citizen and uncondemned? This shows why you need to speak about your citizenship. It impacts people and makes them stop in their tracks and think about what it is they're about to do. This tribune, he's responsible for protecting Roman citizens, making sure their lives are safe and secure. And he's just ordered Paul, a Roman citizen, to be flogged. And understand, this flogging is so much more brutal than the whippings Paul's already undertaken at the hands of these Jewish leaders. See, Roman floggings were done with whips. Look at verse 25 again. See that word whips? We you know what that word whip really is? That's what's known as a flagellum. And a flagellum is these long leather straps that got bits of bone and metal tied into them. This is done for maximum damage, to cause maximum pain and persecution. When you underwent this type of flogging, the skin would be ripped from your body. Your, bruised, your bones would be bruised. And if you weren't killed, you're usually left crippled for life. That's what Paul's facing. All because he's willing to share his citizenship. Speak the truth. So you think about that. You would almost want to say, you know what, Paul's being kind of foolish here. Maybe he'd do well to just shut up and stop talking. Maybe say, you know what, forget what I said. I was, I was just kidding. I didn't mean it. Isn't that what we're so inclined to do? When you look at a situation and you know sharing the word makes somebody mad, what's your first thought? To keep sharing the word, to turn into Jesus Christ? Or to calm things down? I'll just shut up and say nothing. That'll pacify people. But you think that really helps? Does that help anybody come to know what they're doing is wrong? Help them to see where they find their help to see what the better way is? How does staying quiet help anybody? So you need to share God's word. You need to share your citizenship. People need to hear about Jesus Christ, who he is and what he does. Understand, they need to know that no matter what they're suffering or going through, Christ suffered so much more, and he did that for you. Think about that. He takes your sin and shame on himself, goes to the cross where he's mocked, beaten, battered, and put to his death. And it's not for his sins, but it's for yours. How can you know that and not want to share that with others? How does that not get you excited? How do you not say, i got to tell everybody about this. i got to go forth to share my citizenship. You don't want to stay quiet. And understand what Jesus does. He goes in a cross for your sins, but he never knocks you out. He doesn't say, wait, hold on, you got it wrong. I wasn't the guilty person. He did it. She did it. They're the ones who did this. They deserve to be up here. What's he do? He fulfills God's word, fulfills God's promises. Like the prophet says, like a sheep before the shoe, Christ is silent. You know why? Because he knows he's got a purpose, and that's to fulfill the payment of your penalty, to purchase your part. So you can be set free. You know why he wants you to be set free? So you can share your citizenship. So you can help others to be set free. So you can stop them in their tracks. Get them to think a new way and turn in a new direction. Start moving in a whole new way. This is what people need to hear. It's why you need to speak about your citizenship. Because when you do this, it makes a difference in people's lives. You actually impact them. Which brings us to our third point. Your citizenship impacts people. You ever have a time in your life when you're really impacted by someone or something, some event that really made a change, maybe the birth of a child or the death of a loved one, maybe some momentous event that took place in your life, we often have these things. Maybe it's somebody coming into your life who spent time with you, cared for you, showed that they actually were putting your interest before their own, and it made a difference. Can you relate to that? Can you think through your life and say, yes, I remember this event, I remember this person? Well, now ask yourself, have you ever done that for another? Have you ever been the one who so impacted them that you changed the way they think and made a difference in their life? Well, you know how you can do that? By sharing your citizenship. 
Because when you share your citizenship, you impact people. Because your citizenship impacts people. Just as you see in our text. Look at verse 26 here. Look what it says. When a centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do? This man's a Roman citizen. Do you see why you need to speak about your citizenship? Do you see how it makes a difference? How when you share your citizenship, it impacts people, gets them to think about what they're doing. They stop and take notice. They actually think about it. Their actions, the consequences. They see things in a new light. I mean, after all, isn't that just what happened to you? Weren't you walking through your life, minding your own business, going about what you're doing, focused on your future, your marriage, your kids, whatever, and not think about God in the least bit? And what happened? Somebody shared your citizenship with you, and it made a difference. It made you start wondering, what am I doing? What's my purpose? Where am I going? And you know what? You got people all around you who are facing that same sort of thing. Going through their life wondering, what's the purpose? Why am I here? Maybe you're here this morning, and you're still a citizen of the world. You've never gotten that heavenly citizenship. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm not really satisfied with my life. I'm struggling, I'm hurting, I'm suffering. What would make a difference? Well, ask me after, or ask somebody else here who knows Jesus Christ, to share their citizenship with you. Help them to share their citizenship, saying, I want to know what happened to you. What made a difference for you? Why do you do what you do and go the way you go? Because when you do this, you impact people, and it makes a difference for their life. That's why you want to share your citizenship, because you get to impact people's lives and make a difference for them. Help them to see who Jesus Christ is and why, why it's so desperately needed that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and what difference that makes. Show them how he saves your soul and makes you new. Brings you into a new family. Adopts you. All because of the person and work of Jesus Christ. This is how your citizen impacts people. Just as our text shows. Look at verse 27. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he, that is Paul, said yes. This shows how your citizenship impacts people. It piques their curiosity and gets them asking questions. And when people ask you questions, guess what? You no longer have to be fearful, worried, or concerned about upsetting them. Because they ask the question. They want to know. I got to see this firsthand years ago. My wife's parents asked me not to speak about my faith or my God in their home. But then one day they did something. They adopted this cat, big fat cat, and they named it Eli. So they asked me, is Eli a biblical name? I spent the next hour and a half to two hours telling everything I knew about Eli. How Eli was a priest, and like their cat, was a big fat guy, he's been glutton, and he wasn't doing what God said. And that's why we need Jesus Christ, because Christ changes our hearts, gives us something new, makes us a new identity. Because we all have these sinful, gluttonous hearts that think about ourselves, want to just take more and more for ourselves and less and less for others. So we need to have a new heart. So Christ is sent by his heavenly Father to go to the cross and die for our sins. And not just that, but God raises him up high and sends the Spirit to indwell us, equip and enable us to now go forth and no longer be fat, gluttonous people just focused on ourselves, but actually looking to others. Think about how do we help others, how do we serve others, how do we care for others. And that's what happens when you share your citizenship. People want to ask questions, they want to know. And you got the opportunity to answer their questions. That's why you want to know your scripture so well. Can you talk about Eli for an hour and a half? Imagine if you could. Imagine all the opportunity you have to share your citizenship in that context. See, when you do this, you see how your citizenship impacts people in a very real way, just like it does this tribune. Look at verse 28. The tribune answered, I bought this citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, but I'm a citizen by birth. This exchange shows you so clearly how sharing your citizenship impacts people. This tribune's looking at this battered, beaten, and pitiful looking Paul, and now hearing that he's a Roman citizen. And understand something. In these days, being a Roman citizen, saying you're a Roman citizen when you weren't, was a capital offense. So Paul's not lying here. This tribune is going to check this out. You know how we tend to lie and get out of trouble? You know when your kids are caught and they spin these tall tales about what happened? You know, the dog ate my homework. I had it all done, and I was walking, and the, and the rain fell, and it blew away. How often do we do that? 
You blow off worship, blow off some church event, and the pastor says, what happened to you? You say, oh, well, you see what happened was, this happened, I got this flat tire, and then my car blew up, and then I had to go save somebody from a running building. We're good at spinning tall tales. But Paul's not doing that here, because he knows his tribune's going to check it out. Because if he's found to be lying, guess what? It gets him the death penalty. That would end the whole matter. So this tribune checks it out, and he finds out what Paul is saying is true. But not just is it true, Paul didn't buy this citizenship. Paul's a citizen by birth. You know what that means? He's got a higher standing than even this tribune. This tribune had to purchase this for money. And history shows us he probably offered a bribe to get it. But not Paul. Because Paul inherited it. It shows us his father probably served some Roman governor or some high official who was granted this citizenship. So Paul inherited this citizenship. You know what this is like? This is like the whole old money, new money debate. You know how old money looked down on people with new money? Like, you're not a sophisticated, you don't matter as much as us. Well, that's what's going on here. That's what this tribune's hearing. Paul matters more than him, and he just ordered him to be flogged. Because Paul is a Roman citizen by birth. And that's why you want to share your citizenship. You know why? Because you also inherit your citizenship. And not because of what you do, but because of the hard work of Jesus Christ. How he goes to the cross to purchase your pardon, to exchanges his life for yours. And that makes all the difference. That's your citizenship. And it's guaranteed because it's sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. That's why you can share your citizenship. Because the Spirit indwells you, equips you, enables you to do what you need to do to tell people what they most need to hear. That's why you want to share your citizenship. Think about that. You secure your citizenship because the high price that Jesus Christ pays. How can you hear that and want to keep that to yourself? Don't you want to get out there and tell everyone you know that doesn't know Christ about your citizenship, how you got the citizenship, and you were born that way because Christ called you to himself, God adopted you as a son and daughter, and changed your identity? You know what this means is? You're like Paul here. You're the social elite. You're the cream of the crop. You realize that? Look around. What you're saying is the most important people. Because God calls you to himself. And that ought to put a smile on your face. No matter what you're going through, you matter to God. He gives you this top standing. Because he gives you your inheritance. And this is what people need to hear. So share your citizenship. And see how your citizenship impacts people. And when people are impacted, you know what happens? They want to know. They want to move in a different direction. Which brings us to our fourth and final point. Impacted people are set free. Too often, we stay silent, and that means we never force people to consider what they're doing. Never force them to consider the consequences of their words or their actions. And this is why you need to share your citizenship. Because it stops people in their tracks and impacts them in mighty ways. And impacted people are set free, just like you see in our text. Look at verse 29. <clears throat> So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately. Right here you see how people impacted are set free. Because, notice the language again. Those who were about to examine him. Don't lose sight about how they were going to examine him. What was this question going to look like? They were going to flog him. They were going to rip the flesh from his skin, bruise his bones. And if they didn't kill him, leave him crippled for life. But now they hear that Paul's a Roman citizen. And not somebody who bought the citizenship, but who inherited it. And what does that do? That causes them to back away. And notice it's not slowly. They're not like moving away slowly like when a bear is there. They just walk away slowly. They immediately go because they know what they're in trouble. They know what they're facing. If you flog a Roman citizen who hasn't been tried and convicted, guess what? Then you get the death penalty. That's what they're facing. But because Paul shares the citizenship, guess what? They're set free. They don't go through with it. And that shows you why you need to share your citizenship. And understand something about the Roman culture at this point in time. It's a shame culture. So if you bring shame upon a Roman citizen, then there's heavy consequences to that. There's going to be a heavy price to pay. Because Roman citizens, particularly those by birth, were held in very high esteem. They were the top echelon of society. They were the virtually untouchables. So showing this honor to a Roman citizen was a grave offense that carried serious consequences. That's why these men withdraw. And notice the tribune, what's he do? He's terrified, shaking in his boots, as it were. And you see, through this, how impacted people are set free. Look at verse 29, it ends our text. Look what it says here. And the tribune was also afraid, for he realized 
that Paul was a Roman citizen and he had bound him. This drives home how impacted people are set free. If Paul never speaks up, this tribune goes to and to flogging, and guess what happens? He gets put to death. But because Paul speaks up, this man's life is spared. Paul shares his citizenship, and it impacts this tribune. And understand something. Paul's not sharing his citizenship to avoid a flogging, and get out of a beating, or get himself set free. He's not doing it for himself. You know why? Because the moment he says he's a Roman citizen, that's saying, I want a trial. That guarantees he's going to stay in custody and have to go through a trial. His words aren't spoken for himself, but they're spoken to set people free. The centurion and the tribune are set free because they hear about Paul's citizenship. They hear who he is, makes them stop in their tracks and think about what they're doing, think about their consequences. If they went through with the flogging, they would have faced serious consequences would have been put to death themselves. But because Paul shares his citizenship, they're set free. And that's why you need to share your citizenship. Because people everywhere all around you need to know the consequences of their actions. They need to understand that sin carries very grave consequences. Just like flogging a Roman citizen gets you put to death, well, guess what? Every sin you commit gets you to death penalty, causes you to face the wrath and curse of God. And I'm not talking about big sins like murder. I'm talking about every little exaggeration you tell. You know when you take credit for something you didn't do? Yeah, I did a good job, didn't I? Every time you have that sinful thought in your head that nobody knows about, every time you look at something you shouldn't look at, every time you mutter some unkind word, tear somebody down, guess what that deserves? Death. But guess what? There's no condemnation now for him who belongs to Jesus Christ. Christ makes all the difference, and that's what people need to hear. That's why Paul is willing to stand up and speak out and share his citizenship. Because he knows it stops people in their tracks, gets them thinking about what they do. And that's what you need to do. You need to do like Paul and be willing to die for the one who died for you. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to come to worship even if you might get sick? Are you willing to share God's word if it might make somebody mad? Or do you think it's better to just stay aside, in your house, locked away, quiet, and not bothering? Ask yourself. How does that help anybody? How does that show them who Christ is and what they need? Share your citizenship by what you say and what you do. Speak out even if you know it's going to make people mad and get them upset. Because you know when you do this, they'll be impacted. And impacted people are set free. So share the gospel and help people to know how they can be set free from their sin and their shame. Help them see how they don't have to carry these burdens on their own because Christ says, take his burden. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Help them to see that there's a better way to go. Tell them what they're doing is wrong. It's not good to go against God or his ways. Speak out. Speak out. Let people know the truth. Help them to see the right way to go. Even if it means they might get mad. When you think about it, staying silent or speaking out, sharing your citizenship, don't ask, will I make somebody mad? But be more concerned about, am I content with them dying in their sin and their shame and being condemned to hell? Because if you're not, then share your citizenship. See, don't ever say you love somebody if you're not willing to share God's word with them. Because if they don't know Jesus Christ and you don't share God's word, then how much do you really love them? Because you know they're straight going to hell and you're not doing anything to stop them. But if you really care, then you'll share your citizenship. You'll tell them, how you've been set free and given your heavenly citizenship because of the person and work of Jesus Christ. So share your citizenship knowing it'll impact people and no impacted people are set free. You're sure to find yourself in a situation in your life where you're gonna meet somebody new. You got strangers all around and they're gonna know, who are you? Tell me about yourself. And when that time comes, don't speak about everything other than your heavenly citizenship. Let that be the first words out of your mouth. I'm a Christian. I belong to Jesus Christ. How about you? So you want to do this because it stops people in their tracks and makes them think about what they do, makes them think about the way they're going. And even understand that there's a better way. It's the way of God, the way he lays out in his word. So help people to show how you too were once going the wrong way and God turned you around because somebody shared their citizenship with you. So go forth and do likewise. Show people where they get healing, help, and hope. And it's not in this world. It's not in temporary things. 
but it's an everlasting thing. It's in Jesus Christ and the salvation he gives. Tell people how you were once lost, but God made you new, gave you a new identity, adopted you as his sons and his daughters, made you new, brought you into his family. Let them know, not that you're from Italy or Spain, but that you belong to Christ himself. Tell them first and foremost about your heavenly citizenship. That's what you want to do. Share your citizenship with everyone you know. And understand you can do this because your citizenship is inherited. It's sealed by the promise of the Holy Spirit, which means you're equipped, enabled, and empowered to go forth and do as this text says. You know you can share your citizenship because the Spirit enables you to do just that. So go forth and share your citizenship. Friends and guests, brothers and sisters, head out into the world and do justice. Share your citizenship and set people free. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you thanking you and praising you, Lord, for this text of Scripture. Lord, we thank you for seeing Paul's example of sharing his citizenship, Lord, and what a difference that makes. Help us, Lord, to do likewise, to share our citizenship, not just where our ethnicity, Lord, but rather our heavenly citizenship, how we belong to Jesus Christ, and how our inheritance has been given to us through the personal work of Christ. Help us to go forth, Lord, always sharing our citizenship so we can impact people and help them be set free. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.